This is the Spider Cube by Data Color, the latest incarnation of the photographer's gray card. In this case, it comes in a smaller, more durable form with a number of features built in. Its most dominant features from top to bottom are an 18% gray face, uh, a white face on two sides of the cube, and then a black face to help define the shadows. At the top is a chrome ball that does a really good job of showing where specular highlights are going to hit and especially where they're blown out. And really unique is the black trap in the bottom. There's a hole that goes up inside of the cube which is black inside so you get your deepest darkest most absolute black. The bottom of the spider cube features a quarter 20 threaded fitting so that you can place the spider cube on top of a light stand or on a gorilla pod or a little mini tripod. You're going to place this in the image. You're going to light it the way that you intend to and then shoot the images with and without the spider cube. In post-processing, you will click on the spider cube and adjust your colors using the absolute values that are found on the cube. I'd like to demonstrate the spider cube by showing the process without using a gray reference item, whether it be a card or the spider cube itself. When we have an image like this and we want to adjust the white balance, we have to find something neutral in the image. And in this case, we have a lot of colors, uh, but not a lot of black and just a little bit of white. So we're going to utilize the white balance tool and we're going to have to take an educated guess. We're going to find something that we think is relatively neutral and this might be about as close as we can get. Something white on the napkin. If you look at the RGB values down there, uh, the 91, 90, and then 76, we see there's not a lot of blue to balance the image out. But we'll select that as the best we can do. We'll click there. And you see the change in the coloring on the other side. Uh, the yellow has gotten a little bit softer. A lot of the yellow cast has gone out. The green is a little bit truer. Some of the yellow has been taken out of there. You see the difference between the two red tomatoes. The orange tomato is now different from the rest. So we get a little bit truer color, but in order to do that, we had to guess. In this image, you can see that we have included the spider cube in the image. Now what you would do is shoot one image with the spider cube in it and then of course take that out for your final image. With the spider cube in there we know that we have an 18 percent gray right here. We have a nice solid pure white. We have a black even though it's looking a little gray in the lighting and we have an absolute black in the black trap right here. Now this image was lit pretty well with speed lights and so we get a pretty true color rendition but to adjust the white balance just a touch you take the white balance tool come over here to the well lit side of the gray cube and click on it. And you see the difference in the image. It's very subtle, but we get a little truer color. A little more natural purple here, a little nicer red. You can see the difference between the squash and the, and the yellow tomato back there. A nice true green here. A subtle difference between the two greens there. It's a nice image overall. This last image has been intentionally mislit so that we could use the adjustments a little bit further. You'll notice that we have a very yellow cast over this. I intentionally miscolored the lighting so that we could utilize the spider cube tool and see how far it'll get us. So once again, we'll take our eyedropper, we'll come over here to the gray, we'll click on that and you can see an enormous change between the two. The yellow cast has gone out of it. We get a much truer yellow here, a little bit darker red or a deeper, more natural red than the glow that we see on this one. And the purple is very nice here. Now we would do a little bit more adjustment. We would take the exposure and perhaps bring it up just a touch. Our whites, 
by judging here on the cube. We can come up and set it right about there. It's not too bright now. And the blacks we can take and we can deepen the black down. Now what's nice is I know that this was a black surface upon which this image was made. So we black out the background, the black surface here and everything. And it really brings out the colors on the vegetables much, much better. This solid black down here is an excellent tool. We can check for clipping here. Now you see that I have adjusted the blacks just a little bit too far because everything is clipping in black. Now that works for this image, but it might not for everything. So what you would do is roll back your black until just your deepest shadows remain black there. So the black trap is the deepest part. We can do the same thing up here. We can check our specular highlights. This is where the, the strobe is firing from. And so I want that blown out, but I don't want anything else blowing out. If I had taken my whites and blown them up too far, you begin to see everything is clipping there. So I roll this back until just that highlight on the chrome is highlighted. So you see by adding the spider cube in, I have really simplified the process of adjusting the white balance, adjusting the exposure, adjusting my whites and blacks on this image, uh, and it saved me a lot of time. Now I can get into the creative process that all of my computerized tools allow me to use. So you've seen what the spider cube can do. So the question remains, is the spider cube for me? If you're shooting raw, this is an excellent replacement for any gray card system that you might be using or even just trying to set your balances by guessing. Uh, but it's also effective for the JPEG shooter in that you can use your camera's facility to set a custom white balance from an image by filling the frame with a picture of the cube and then letting the software in your camera go to work. The Spider Cube ships with the cube, a lanyard, a protective carrying bag, and a set of instructions. The instructions are a little sketchy, but you can pretty much figure out how to use the tool once you put it inside one of your images. It's not very big, it's just a hair bigger than an SDHC card, and so I think you can find a place within your bag to utilize it. This is an excellent tool, and I think you'll find your, yourself using it more and more as you become accustomed to what it can do for you.